Good morning! Oh, this week I have such a treat for you. Uh, this week, uh, Zeus Noob Cat or Noob Cat Hinton was on the stream and we had so much fun coding a uh, blinky blinky thing, uh, doing hardware coding. Uh, 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 oh god, it was such a joy. Um, I, just watch it. It's, uh, it's a, it, it was so nice. Before we get on to the show, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Hostinger. If you ever need a domain name or VPS, like we set up here, a basic Ubuntu server ready to use, uh, look at this amazing design, uh, then you should check Hostinger out. Hostinger focuses a lot on speed, so it's gotta be fast, 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 but their number one priority is customers. And they wanted me to pass on this message. We obsessively orientate to our customers' needs and provide them with the best tools and services to ensure their success online. Start building your online presence and experience the easy flow and fast speeds on every step of your journey. Hostinger seems to really care about their customers. Go check them out at hostinger.com slash fun 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 and use the coupon code Fun, fun, fun to get up to 90% off their yearly web hosting plans. Thank you, Hostinger, for sponsoring this episode. Now, on to the show. Uh, Binary Digit, my favorite, two fave coding streamers. Aww. <laughs> That's so nice. Oh, uh, yes, we're on stream. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Welcome to the, 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 the tech problem uh, mess. Um, it's, uh, as, as Sue said, while uh, I was restarting the computer, it's very fitting because we're going to do a hardware stream today. So, uh, like, we're now, Sue's is helping me move out uh, of, this, uh, of the safe and uh, cuddly <laughs> uh, domain of web development where you can control everything uh, into the world of hardware where everything breaks all the time. So. Um, chat, so what we're gonna do today is, um, I've ordered this little thing at the instruction of, of the Zeus. Like I, I got one too. Yeah. And you also got this very recently, right? Yeah, it came like two days ago. <laughs> I was really worried that it was just going to be you with it, but I thought it'd be cool if we both had one each. Yeah, because we can probably control each other's like with VS Code Live Share or something. That would be fun. Oh, that would be really cool. Uh, so the the idea is basically to do something with this. Uh, I'm kind of like I have my uh, I have my expectations set uh, pretty low because it, for me the objective of the stream is more to push through some weird fear. That I have of hardware, really. Um, I've, I've just, just, I, I love working with hardware every time I do it, but for some reason I just like, ooh, it's it's scary, uh, and I tend to just return to the safe app world all the time. So that's this is some kind of cognitive behavioral uh, <laughs> therapy exposure thing to hardware. <laughs> I'm very happy to help you with that. I mean, sometimes I want to make a thing and once you get used to hardware too, you also just like, you're not scared of it, but, but you also know how much effort it's going to be. And you're like, oh, is it going to be worth it? So I totally understand. Yeah, it's uh, somebody asked me us to link the uh, Blink stick. Yes, we haven't talked about what it is yet. No, uh, yeah, it's, it, it is a square. But it's a stick. It's called Blink Stick. So I guess the, their original product was a stick. Mhm. Mm I just thought it would be cool to get the one with the 3D printing printed enclosure on it because I have this thing about lighting where I really hate undiffused LEDs, and this is actually a quite. It looks quite beautiful. I don't like you were playing with it, um, Matthias. It looks quite beautiful when you do actually get the the color lighting up inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's absolutely gorgeous when it lights up. So, shall we try to do some coding? 
uh, occasionally. Yeah, this, I mean, the sun is up. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Like you can see my room has just slowly lit up and uh, we have Barry. Barry's awake now too, so. I, I should be better at this. No, it's okay. That, that is a sentence all right. that all developers all the time utter all the time. Yes, I should be better at this. Um, I, I do. I like I, it's now lighting up, though. That's something. That's good. It's, it's red. It's red. I should perhaps like display it toward, uh, on my uh, suit jacket. That's a good background for it. Oh no. Whoa, I'm getting some weird stuff. All right, one sec. I think it's because I used to be on like Visual Studio Code uh, Insiders and then I just kind of like put that app in the trash. <laughs> um, and now it's confused about what my default VS Code is. Oh my God. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, I just restarted it and all the icons look super different. I think it was just in a state where it had updated and now. All right, let me try this that again. Is brilliant. Sorry. Don't worry. Uh, I'm trying. You know, while you're doing that, I'm a Vim girl, do a, so I don't really understand this. Um. Oh, well, like, respect for Vim girl, though. I, um, I, um, I'm going to try to put a bit of tape and apply this to my jacket while we're at it. That would be really fun. The, because, like, I can tell you like a little bit of behind the scenes while I'm over here, uh, like exploiting the fact that I have wireless microphones. Uh, you can hear, gonna hear, hear some nice sounds of me looking through boxes of different things. That uh, before the stream, I was trying to set up a an extra camera, like an overhead camera, to look at the uh, to look at the uh, the blink stick. However, I realized that I have the battery for that camera at home. Oh no, So I hate that. Yeah, so it's like, there's absolutely no reason why I would have it at home. I just accidentally took it home because I thought it was another battery. So I'm gonna, you, because as, as a good uh, video professional, I'm going to apply a bit of <laughs> duct tape here and then apply this here. And I will uh, not, not no, I, there's no chance that I'm going to walk away here and not pull my entire rig down with me. Well, you've been busy. Let me see. I can see your code. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I was like, oh, you've been busy. <laughs> yeah, it just popped up in my Visual Studio, so I am all good now. Brilliant. Yeah, so uh, I, I have some, some code here. Oh yeah, this is tricky because I th because this I'm using like um, uh, I, I, I was trying to control this with my keyboard, so I install a a keyboard um, like a keyboard watcher. The problem is that now I can't close it because come on, <laughs> Control C doesn't work. Okay, can you give me access to your terminal? Because maybe I can. Yeah, close it. <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay, how do I there? How do I give access to my terminal? Uh, uh, I just requested. Oh, there. Oh, awesome. It's, you should have a little toast. There we go. Yeah. You know, it's funny because like I, I did this demo at Microsoft. Um, I I did a couple of stops for it. Microsoft Ignite the Tour and I would give this demo and we would be like, oh, yes, and you should have a terminal request, you know. <laughs> it's just reminding me of that. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, I was wondering, like, you're, you, you're like, oh, I'm good, like, I do Vim, and then you know, like, the intricacies of how Visual Studio Code works in the live share. So. Well, the joke that I did on stage was this. I'd be like, oh, thanks for terminal access, and then I would start writing this <laughs> in the terminal. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, yeah, I just realized that you two, like the technical mess, I completely got to, uh, forgot to do a proper introduction of you. Uh, I guess that a lot of people here know you because you are very well known on Twitch. But for the people that don't, uh, don't that come from my part of the audience, uh, can you? How do you usually introduce yourself? I know you as like the person that taught me how to stream on Twitch 
stream programming <laughs> on Twitch, basically. I know you as the person who taught me how to improve my video game. It's really weird. Like, I think we were talking about this earlier. I used to watch your videos and I was like, I wish I was this good at just, you know, sitting down and making videos and then live streaming ended up like a better choice for me. So yeah, uh, I can I can totally introduce myself. I'm very bad at doing this usually, but uh, I'm Sue Sinton and I am, I guess, a full stack developer. I do a little bit of hardware and I like cloud stuff, but I also like have basically a traditional front end development background. Um, and I've been coding since I was, I guess, a kid. Like I'm sort of someone who's just always been into computers. I think it's important to sort of talk about background now, whether or not you know you entered technology later in life or earlier in life. Yeah. So that that's my kind of origin story. Um, yeah. So I think I, this is my 15th year coding professionally, and Whoa. I'm having a really good time. <laughs> I think people don't realize how old I am. <laughs> No, That's part no of but I can relate to that. People always get very surprised when I tell them my age. Yeah, I'm in my mid-30s, you know, and so... Um, mid-30s, I've woo! seen a lot of... Yeah, mid-30s club. Um, but I've, I've seen a lot of changes in the industry. Um, and I've done a lot of different things in that time. And so I'm super into hardware as a hobby. And in the last, I would say, three years, I've sort of made that creep sort of tried to creep that hardware hobby into my professional life a little bit, um, hopefully without ruining the hobby while I go along. And it's it's been kind of fun. So right now I work at Stripe and I do a lot of front end, but I also just do a lot of dog fooding uh, products before they go out to give feedback on them. And right now I'm learning Go so that I can contribute to our Stripe CLI, which is written in Go. Um, and I, I get to release a lot of open source samples and things like that, which is really fun too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, like your stream is also something that I feel like we really should push uh, because it's such a <laughs> nice, uh, nice community. You have the nicest, uh, nicest people <laughs> hanging around. You, it feels like you you have curated these people so well. I feel so lucky because the curation side has been mostly my community self-curating themselves. Ah, and so, nice. you know, I, I, I made some moderators maybe, like I, I made some, some of my community moderators like maybe a year after I started streaming. And I've just been so, so lucky. Like obviously harassment happens, abuse happens, but it's very quickly dealt with to the point where, yeah, the, the community is just so self-curating. And I want to say that, I had nothing to do with it because it really is all on them. But I guess I set the stage for this being a wholesome stream. And I just want to treat people and teach people in the way that I wish, you know, that I was treated. And, and I think that that sometimes works out pretty well. So my stream is mostly JavaScript with some hardware sprinkled in and it's really fun. <laughs> it's so nice. Aniket says that you two have the nicest streams. And as I say, it's curing my headache just listening to you talk. Oh, that's so nice. I love the cuddly, uh, cuddly atmosphere of that. Yeah, it's really great. It's so good. Um, yeah, so uh, you are here because uh, of your expertise in hardware and then like um, mm -hmm. that you, unlike me, are uh, not afraid of these things. So what we're going to do is program something with this little uh, blink stick that is now attached to my jacket. I think that we should, like the thing I, I kind of want to start, can you just like uh, uh, modify this code and like on your end, change the color of this? Yeah. This would be really cool. Feel free to mess up the code because I would like saved it elsewhere. And this, I've done this little Firebase integration here that uh, won't work because I removed oh, the key. Cool. So yes, like I think we're just going to do away with that. Um, I just wanted to see if you can make it, make it blink. Yeah. So if I do, um, instead of set color, what is it? Is it set pulse? Uh, it might be. I should probably like look up the box here. <laughs> I forget what the API is, but I sort of want to pulse this with, uh, random. Is it set pulse? I thought it was set pulse. Let's see. Like, um, um... And I'm going to change both of these, actually. Uh, um, chat, I'm going to paste the link to the docs so that you can uh, follow along here. 
But it looks like when you get a, a key press. Yeah, like it says like it basically how fast you press is is the color change. No, like the ugh, this is yeah, like yes, press. dump the key press thing. Um, the thing <laughs> uh, I was making this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I want the thing I want to build with this eventually is like a habit tracker. So I want to have like a little. I, uh, I want to have this in my home and have this like in the morning. It's red, and then I press a key and it goes green. I'm gonna press it when I bring my food box because I'm pretty good at cooking food, but I just always forget to bring it to work, and then it goes <laughs> bad. So I actually end up wasting more money, even though I tried to save money. And I'm the worst at creating habits. I just want this visual little tick box in my home. So that is what the... Um... Oh, I get it. So hang on a sec. Um, I'm going to undo this then. And I'm just going to do... Where are we actually setting it up? I feel like I'm actually following you around. And so I'm scrolling and then you're scrolling. Oh, and we're like yeah. fighting with each other. Oh, but... sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm so you've following got you. LED. Uh, Okay, so so I'm on line 19. Yeah. See I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm also using Vim mode in this, and so I'm trying very hard to just, like, not fail. Oh. <laughs> There's a Vim... Uh, like, what does so, Vim mode even mean in this case? Like, does that mean you get the HJKL navigation? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so, like, I'm not getting autocomplete for the library, which is confusing to me. Oh, sorry. Like, uh... I, I think that I... Is it set pulse? I think I probably have that disabled. Uh, I tend to disable all of no, those things because I find them distracting. I'm weird in that way. Blinks do... No, no, you're not weird at all. Well, I mean, I, I have like very limited autocomplete in Vim anyway. Um, Blinks stick Node.js pulse. I'm just going to look it up. Because that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, hello, Nerd. It said uh, pulse. Uh, it's, it's pulse and then it's red. Uh, blue, red, green, blue. Oh, it's just pulse. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool, 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 cool. Um, uh, so it's pulse, and then I'm actually going to do random so that every time you start this script up, it's actually just going to. Do you know if a callback is required? No, I'm just I don't gonna think so. Do no, it's optional. Okay, I'll just put it in here anyway. Um, wait. Uh... <laughs> Foreplay says we are the poor man's autocomplete. I think you are a very <laughs> expensive autocomplete, actually. <laughs> um, oh, I, I'd use the wrong. Yeah, that's very annoying. Um, oh, you're not a semicolon <laughs> person. I keep forgetting. That's oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That is so like that is so respectful. I'm in your stream, I shouldn't be using semicolons. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's an etiquette thing. Yeah. All right, so if I go into your terminal and I love that I have control of your it terminal so right cool. now. This always blows my mind. It's so. So right. if I do this, oh no, okay, so what let's see here. Up? What is this? Uh, uh, binary module. Hang, hang on. What? Let's see. Node uh, dash version. You should change. Uh, hang on. You should change your NVM version. use uh, eight. That will work because this. Uh, I found that last weekend. Uh, when I was playing around with this, that it that that this their library it doesn't work with uh, newer Node versions. So I think this would yeah. give us another error message. And that makes sense. Um, All right. Did it pulse? I, did it pulse around? I color? don't know. I feel like it didn't. I don't know. It's it's not pulsing. But hang on. It didn't. Hang on. Changing MPG thing. I tried to press X to exit it and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Do you just do a Control D instead? Oh, oh hang on. I think I think that this thing, like it has to. Um, this is this is complicated. I'm to get fancy. I think that we should remove those. Those. Hang on. Let me just remove this these Firebase parts. Because this global key press is completely messing everything up for us. Uh, oh, I see. Um, because it, it it's gonna listen. To, uh, it it starts up a, like a um, permission dialogue on my uh, on my screen, <laughs> like looking for like. Let's uh, get rid of this too. 
and that's so much oh my god you just deleted the whole yeah, thing yeah yeah that. yes i am big on deleting code i think that we'll delete this too all right so now you have no free reign let's okay i'm gonna try to i have to kill this terminal again can you uh live share share terminal and read write there now you get a terminal yeah i'm back yes um, so if I do know it, you know, oh, okay. I'm typing way better today. Um, I think it's, can we just, can we fix this? Sorry. Uh, I think, uh, can we, can we just, do you have 12 installed? Uh, maybe let's see. I, I'm going to do something I really um, naughty. I know you're not supposed oh, to do it, mean, but like I'm going to not modify node modules. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go into, so don't do this at home folks, but. <laughs> The thing is, so I, while uh, Zeus is doing it, I can explain what this is. So um, the, I, I mentioned before that this module doesn't work in Node 8. However, there is a Stack Overflow fix for this, uh, that where we can just like go in and mess with the Node modules package, and it will supposedly work. Um, and the thing is, like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, that's yes. Uh, okay, we got it. <laughs> and the, I, I just felt like so dirty doing that as I'm a like web developer. I feel like how this would mess up deploy so bad. But the thing is, like when you're working with hardware, it doesn't really matter. You can just like commit the node modules or whatever. Okay, so we have another error. Let's see what this is. Mm, so this. Oh, it's because like we switched. So well, you know what? I'm gonna do this, and then I'm going to go back in and do the reinstall again. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we need All to. Right. So we did this, and then nodes, modules, uh, link stick. Do you know I learned something? Um, the like when I was playing with this, I went into I created a directory called Blinkstick, and then I did npm init, and then just accepted all the defaults. So it called the project Blinkstick, and then I couldn't install npm install Blinkstick into something with a package JSON of Blinkstick because yes. obviously that's going to create a circular dependency. So it was like super interesting. <laughs> I like that art. Uh, Forest Planner asked, "Why is this frowned upon on new to npm JS?" I think it's just like practice, really. Um, it's because most deployment flows, when you push things up, uh, like if you do a dockerize something, uh, you tend to not commit the node modules and have the package.json control everything so that you can deterministically do npm install on everyone's machine and, and it will work. And I guess that also it does builds different uh, on different systems. So you might, if you're doing Windows and Mac development, that means that if you commit the node modules uh, directory, that means that you won't uh, that you won't you will only be able to do it on Windows if the node modules directory is Windows and so on. Uh, no opcat. Uh, Clock Arrow suggests that maybe the package.lock is interfering. Uh, yeah, I just did npm rebuild. It's actually your gRPC stuff. It wasn't even the blink stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rebuild all this stuff. Brilliant. <laughs> Yay! Oh, did you see awesome. that? Awesome. All right, all right. Do it again. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Wait, wait. Um, I'm going to pulse it, and then I'm going to do LED dot set color. Um, not like me. I was about to say how well I was typing today, and then I just kind of lost it. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to set it to purple. Yeah. You might not be able to see that. Oh, the semicolon habit, I tell you what. <laughs> right. You are allowed. So, you are allowed. Ooh, there it is. That's, that's my, you know what, uh, Suze? I'm going to move my light a little bit more away so that may, might result in this mm -hmm. being more visible. This, yeah, okay, this is very dangerous. This is so, this is, oh, you have no idea how dangerous this is. Uh, okay, I actually have to do this so I don't flip all, like flip over all my camera, camera gear. Oh no, uh, that's not, are you sure? You, you know, like, because before, Nalaj, I think it was Nalaj that says like, he's, I'm, I'm so ready to clip when MPJ, uh, like, pulls his laptop down with his suit jacket with that arrangement. Uh, okay, let's see here. 
Uh, I have to move this camera here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah! Yeah, My sorry. mic is about I was almost falling. <laughs> I was ignoring the chat too. Sorry. I was just kind of like having fun in the terminal. Okay. So I'm gonna move um, this this light back. All right. This is. Oh God. This is like a final like final last words moment. Oh God. Uh, first Planua, actually, yes, I'm using the Vim bindings for VS Code. Um, it's not the same. It's just not the same. You saw me. I was like editing the package JSON with Vim in the terminal because I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it in the main editor window. <laughs> I was like, I'll just be in this tiny little Vim window here rather than actually using the IDE itself. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. All, All right. right, you ready? Yeah. All right. So, yes. I didn't think they saw that. No. Okay. You want me to do it yeah. again? Okay. Yes. That's awesome. Like I. It's very fun. Yeah, it's really fun. This is also one of those moments that is, uh, absolutely like bizarre that, like you are. Wait, where are you now? You're in San Francisco, no? No, I'm in Seattle. Seattle. Uh, and Ooh. and I am in Stockholm, and we are on stream. Uh, oh, that's very nice. Um, and we are on stream, and you're working in my editor, changing a local environment, affecting hardware. Like it's it's an insane amount of things that are. Uh, it's so, much so fun. fun. Yeah, Static says, "What a time to be alive!" Controlling hardware from the other side of the globe. Art of Game says, This is IoT. MPJ has become a <laughs> Christmas tree. Yes. <laughs> I feel like when you say, like, this is IoT, I just, uh, I just visualize the Sparta guy. Like, they like, this is Sparta. Kicking <laughs> that person down into the pit. Uh, oh. I tried to do a Vim command and it said not. I couldn't. That's fine. Oh, right. Agent 0000 says, new shirt idea. I coded a thing and then it has a blink, blink box sued into the lapel and it blinks just random colors. I love that. I love that, that really so cool. hard. I, uh, that... Oh, that's what I did wrong. Okay, cool. Yeah. Vim in Vim mode in VS Code is just. It's like bizarro world film. <laughs> it's not quite. <laughs> it's just like a little anyway. bit like editor uncanny valley that you just uh, like it. It's that, but it just makes you uneasy. So what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about how this works? Do you want to talk about the API internals? Do you want to just like, because you had a lot of this code already written. Yeah. So. I don't know really. Uh, I just want like it would be nice if we could just. Uh, I just want to do something. Have a like perhaps have it integrated with something. Uh, we talked a little bit about like integrating it with uh, with Twitch. I'm not sure how uh, realistic that is because like the Twitch API <laughs> is a little bit annoying sometimes. Yes, we had chats about yeah, this. Yeah, we had chats about this. <laughs> we, we talked about this. <laughs> like, yeah, so the Twitch stocks, the Twitch, because you have like JSON web tokens and all sorts of stuff, yeah. but you wanted this light to come on when your stream went live, right? Exactly. Perhaps, are, are we as like, lucky enough to, that that is a public endpoint? The, that the stream is live? Yeah, it is. Oh. So as long as you've got... Um, I think it can just poll the user yeah. and then get the channel and then you can get whether it's live or not. So if you don't want to use like the, the whole web hooky thing, you know, and you got to subscribe to the web hook every two weeks. Yeah. And... Yeah. Then we, we uh, in order to do that, we will have to turn this in, into a multi week stream. Uh... Yes. Yeah. That would be a little intense. So I think if we do the Twitch API and like get channel by channel ID, and if you know what your channel ID is, um, I which like I don't is hard to get. No, you no, have no to call the API exactly. To but I that. actually do have code for that. Uh, but oh, I well, I will run that while you're fiddling around with the doxy thing. I can actually get that, and I do have a little bit of a 
No, stay. <laughs> stay. I'm gonna. Uh, no. And I have this. Maybe I can do actually a pulse random and then a set random. It would be really cool. Like, I love that uh, they have a random. Yeah, this. I, I honestly, it would be very interesting to. Did I also say very interesting? Uh, very interesting to like build a t-shirt, like a piece of cloth, and then wirelessly connect it to Twitch so that people can modify it with chatbot commands. I'm not saying we should do that today, but like that would be nuts. Yeah, I did that a while ago. I designed like a tiara. <laughs> and then as you put chat commands in, the tiara would light no! up differently. It was really fun. That yeah, um, was. I'll send you if you promise to to like make sure you make fun of this photo of me because it was when I decided to grow my eyebrows out, which was not a good idea. Oh, um, it, I'll send you this really dark. Oh my god, it's me. like um, is that like growing bangs kind of thing? You just got let. The, I'll try this, and then you go like no. I just got so tired of grooming them on an endless basis. I was like, no, I'm going to grow them out, and then I was like, this was a bad idea. Uh, let me send it to you. So I kept the photo up just to, you know, like have a laugh every now and again. So I'm sending it to you. Oh, I'm putting it in the chat actually so people can look at it. Yeah, so it was this silly tiara and the crystals lit up and then you could put a command in like bang tiara and then the color. All right, so like the channel ID is not like secret information in any way, right? No, I don't uh, think so. No, yeah. It's just I'll just paste it in the chat if anybody wants to like follow along in the endpoints. I appreciate it. It's just like they're very thick. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but that looks good. That's nice. I think you're obsessing too hard. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think everyone does that. Yeah, for sure. Like that's a problem with like if my hair is slightly off uh, in the morning. I just feel garbage. It's like you have this very <laughs> certain way that you want your own being to be. And if it's off, you're just like the world is incomplete and incorrect. Yeah, I get really grumpy. I want to like not do that. Like I let myself ruin my own day sometimes when I'm like, yep. I don't know. I'll just be like, my jeans just look different today and I don't know why. And then now it's ruined my day. Yeah, yeah I feel you. Okay, so. This is amazing. Um, I, I have to do something like this. Oh, you're looking at the TR. Yeah, yeah. it's, so, it's, uh, it's that is the best. I think I had just a really short YouTube video of us getting it working and I basically like got people to test it out on the stream. It was very meta. And then I just never did anything with it after that. I was like, that was so much effort. I, it took me like a week to build it and 3D print. And then I just kind of like didn't do anything with it. Perhaps I should do one with like a, a motor. So that, that would be fun. Yeah, because it would fun if it had like multiple commands so that it couldn't like flip itself off. Yeah. That would be so fun. Mm. I've thought about like we've always joked about me putting like a little servo motor on the ceiling with some fishing wire down to one of Barry's arms and when when someone Wait, says something the, in the, the chat the, he like the sloth waves. is named Barry. Yes, his name is Barry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so I'm doing I'm looking at get users all right I'm looking at the new API reference and I'm not seeing there's no live status I think they've started just like pulling back information the new API is very different I'm a little bit sad oh no um oh, let's see I'll jump Plop this up. Does anybody know here? Like, uh, uh, Clarka or oh, mentioned TMI.js before? Like, do you know, if, Clark, do you know if TMI has some support for this? Yeah, the, this, this endpoint doesn't. Oh, God. And then get streams just gets like a bunch of live paginated streams. You can't. Get a specific stream. Like I'm not super stoked with this new API because you used to be able to just get. It used to be like get channel. Oh yeah, and they're deprecating uh, version three, right? Yeah, and five. <laughs> 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 um, I think that this is back from like the three days that you used to be able to do this. I think. 
Oh, channels reference. Yeah, version five. Get channel. Why can't you just do that now instead of having to do webby hooks? Uh, however, like in uh, perhaps we uh, uh, HSTE says are possibly due to GDPR. I don't think so. Like it's public information. Um, but uh, TMI, uh, Robert Tabor says that TMI JS uh, is more for the chat and IRC stuff. So uh, could we like perhaps make it flash when there is a chat message? Yeah. We can do that. That'd be really fun. Like, let's not screw around with webhooks today. Yeah, because um, I we, uh, yeah we can use TMI, which is the node module, right? Because I figure that I I am when playing around with things, I often find myself obsessing over things that are really hard to do, and sometimes it's just yeah. easier to uh, just okay. Look, what is actually like an easier solution to this? I'm just like Googling this. Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, is it tmi.js? Mm. I've never used this. I usually just use like generic, um, I use generic uh, IRC clients. Oh. I've never used like, does that make sense? Yeah, like yeah, I'm just yeah. lazy and I'll just use that. No, no, like if it's, I would, it's too, <laughs> too many images, tmi, npm, twitch. But TMI looks like you use it in the front end. A community centric supported version of T. It's called Twitch. Is this called Twitch.js now? Oh no, uh, yeah, it has it been. Is. Oh no, it's one of those libraries where like there has been a fork. <laughs> oh no, it's one of those libraries. <laughs> no, it's like it was just when like uh, Hudson was no uh, Jenkins was forked off by Hudson and Node was like that for a while, where it's called IOJS. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what should one use? Should one use Twitch, uh, uh, Twitch JS or TMI JS? Which which mm, is the main? But Nolage says that TMI can be used in both client and backend. But where are the documentations for that? Yeah. Because all I saw is the front end. I Twitch.js looks pretty good. Which is the fork, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's see, let's uh, where's the GitHub on this? Mm, a latest commit on December 2018. I think that TMI mm. JS is the thing. Okay. But perhaps, um, uh, oh, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We can definitely use that. I just like put in a placeholder like require because I didn't know what it was called. I think it's like TMI JS, yeah. right? Um, that's my scrolling and reading. Yeah. How, yeah, this, uh, yeah, this documentation does not explain this at Oops. all. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what happened? See, so that is a weird thing that happens sometimes in Vim mode. And it's very frustrating. Anyway, um, so we want like TMI is TMI.js, right? Yeah. I love how in on a stream, I would just stop using W and B in Vim, even though I use W and B all the time. And they like allow you to skip forward a word and back yeah, a word. Yeah, I was just about to and say that. Like, isn't this like all the Vimers for like word, 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 word? Yeah, and so instead, like, I'll just hold down J instead of going, oh, I'm going to go to four. Or I'll just be like, I'm going to go all the way to the end, you know, instead of just doing zero or dollar sign. Like, I clearly know the shortcuts because I just demonstrated them. But when I'm on stream, it's like I just don't 
do anything that I normally do and I'm just like I'm gonna just like do it one cursor at a time I don't understand why I do this Matthias but I want you to tell me that you do the same thing sometimes Um, because then I'll feel less well I'm worse actually Uh, I actually don't know any shortcuts Um, I have the worst memory and I've been through so many editor switches and uh, and whenever like I find myself in a situation where where I switch from um, sketch uh, from Photoshop to sketch, I just realized that my whole world fell apart because I was relying so much on uh, on hotkeys. So now I just just in order to avoid that trauma, uh, I just uh, I just don't learn hotkeys anymore. I just refuse. I think the tooling is the same. I just don't install too many plugins because I feel like that will lock me into an editor or a world. I just want to be, I'm, uh, I guess like it's just like editor promiscuity is, yeah, somehow. Like I just don't want to get attached. I totally get um, it. I don't have a ton of aliases in my bash because of that reason. And I try not to do too many in Vim either because if I'm jumping on a server box, like, or for example, I'm using Vim on your computer right now, right? Like if I'm in here. I don't want to rely on, you know, like all the shortcuts I have because I clearly can't take them with me to every computer. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Neil. This asks if there's a name for uh, uh, if there's a name for hotkey phobia. I don't think there's a good Latin word for hotkey. You know that I'm like having to go through so the documentation hosting is failing for me it's not resolving so i'm actually going through the test source code right now oh my god um that is spectacular yeah, so it's not great um so this is yeah it's uh um, tmijs uh, org is fit i think that this is uh i was recommended tmijs uh, at some point, and I think it was some crap like this, and I asked, like, screw this, I'm going to write my own <laughs> endpoints, uh, or interface against the endpoints. Not that that uh, worked out either, so I'm... Um... Okay, I, I can, I, I mean, if you go to the IoT t- TR, you can actually just steal... Like I'm using Kiwi, so Kiwi IRC is like a web IRC client, and they have their own they actually open source their Node.js client yeah. um, library. And I really like using that one. Oh, brilliant. It just means that you probably want to, um, like I can make a .env file to put like your private. Oh yeah, because I can't, like, it's hard for me to open it. Um... Oh, actually, no, you don't need a password or anything, but you have to join as like, a user. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So I need to have a, fa- a test user. Yeah, that's the only annoying thing. I don't know whether TMI does the same thing. But I have a test user. Okay. I have a test user. That's cool. Uh, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, I actually have like an FF bot. Does that work? Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, yeah, just use that code. Yeah. I love it. FFBot. Yeah, so you have to have a Twitch token. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on, I think... But it's also very fun. It feels like we're going... Okay, and the access token you need, not the refresh token. Yeah, Code and Garden says TMIJS supports anonymous auth, so if you're just listening for messages, you can do that with no client ID and auth token. That's actually really good. Yeah, that's very nice. But like some documentation would be is really nice. Important. Oh, okay. So Clark IO linked us to the GitHub pages. I realize that we're already going down another path now. I'm sorry that we did not see that in the chat. It's actually very difficult to pay attention to the chat when yeah. you're doing a group stream. He yes. has put it in repeatedly and I feel terrible about it. <laughs> Sorry, <Claire. laughs> I should really have, I should really have picked it up. I was trying to keep tabs on the chat while uh, Sears was coding. Uh, all right, so let's have a look at this.
So it's just like going connect and So how do we do this? Do we just paste in the example here? Where do we start? Uh, for Kiwi or TM? Oh, TS, TM. Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I I was looking at the link, the TMI link because like Clark Gale sent. sent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think you can just not put in the identity part of the options. All right, cool. Or you just create a client without options. They need to do like client dot probably join and then the channel name right. and then yeah, client dot join. Right, fun fun function. Again, that documentation doesn't tell the whole story, but it's definitely like getting us a lot closer. Alright, so like client dot join. And like will the channel be like my channel name, like fun for function? Yeah. I'm trying to look up that. Let's see, I don't know what. Will I get any uh, error message if I do this? I get some. Yeah, do, join, join the channel. So it's client dot join, and then the channel name, and then it's a promise. Oh, okay. So, so let's you can see. do the you can do dot then, and then what gets passed into the promise resolution is the actual channel object. Okay, let's see. Console dot log. Yeah, so X will be the channel. Let's see, and I'm just yeah. gonna do an catch. Because I think this is probably gonna fail. Because Murphy's law. <laughs> so, I'm so validated about your typing right now. It's making me feel so much better about myself. <laughs> oh, TMI fail. I, I am especially like I'm even more horrible than I'm usually am because I'm trying to learn a um, um, keyboard like American keyboard layout. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so glad we get to blink your blink stick every time as well. Okay, uh, error. Team, I fail. Uh, uh, not connected to server. So what does that mean then? I think it's because, uh, oh, I can't use my shortcut, um, but does this need to be like that? Oh, okay, makes a lot of sense. See, we're running it again. Uh, no, it's still. So I think but maybe. Connect, that, that, maybe connect returns a promise. Yeah, maybe. Because it doesn't make sense that it would connect immediately because we're not blocking or yeah. anything. So let's just yeah. then that. <coughs> yeah, it's connect then. Yeah. yeah, 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 it's a promise as well. Makes no sense. Uh, you get nothing back, so yeah. Yep. So let's do this. And just for debugging purposes, I'm gonna do console.log. Uh, connected. <laughs> I love when you see that in the console, you're like, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. we have a channel object. We do. And uh, all it has is, is that it? Yeah, like, uh, so what do we do with the channel object where we find this, this doc for the, hang on, connection. Uh, this is great. Thank you, Clark Ayer, for helping. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Client on so, chat. Oh, we might like actually be able to do this. This is great. Pretty stoked. All right. Uh, so events.md, I'm in here right now, so I need to remember to put this in the chat. Um, ah. So I think received message on channel, so it should be like chat. Yeah. Um, like, so I'm gonna. I'm, uh, this, this is what I'm looking at right now. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, awesome. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, in with that. Um, the clock arrow, clock arrow said chat already. It's already, but this is the ball with the. 
And then if we do random, what would be cool is if, um, oh, damn it. <laughs> what would be cool is if we, um, I guess if it's, yeah, we don't care about that. Um, Three Duplessis says, damn, you should do a triple stream with Clark Arrow. That would be so cool. <laughs> I would love to have three people doing this. Like, it's chaos. What would be cool is, you know what I want to do? I want to, sorry, I hope you don't mind me just like. No, no, go, go, go. What I want to see, and I, I don't really care about debugging mode, I'd rather just see it in the console. Um, I want to see user state, because I want to see if we can pull the color out for that person. Does that make sense? Oh. The semicolon habit is, yeah, is tough. So, so if cool. we do this, okay. and then people just type something. Yeah, typey type. There we go. Yeah, so there's me. Um, I'm Turbo, all that information. But do I have, yes, color. So. Um, oh my God, that's amazing. So then we can just do userState.color. So we can do, okay, so yeah, let's do um, const color equals uh, userState.color. Oops. Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> You're making me very comfortable now. I like that. Um, users userState.color. Color, otherwise uh, random, right? Yeah. So cool. Um, then we can just do yeah because um, it supports hex codes. What? I, because it supports hex codes. Because it's yeah, uh, yeah because it's hex yeah code. that's why it's so cool. So when I saw that was in a hex code, I'm like, we don't have to do any transformation work at all. All right, so this if we amazing. do this, um, and then I do test, I'm purple. Yeah, it goes purple. Oh my god, and. Okay, so that's it. And chaotic good boy, which is blue. Hello, hello, on earth is is. Oh, that's so cool. And I should turn pink. No. Yes. Oh, it's doing it. That should go green. And uh, <laughs> it's so, yeah, so that's how quick it is. Thank you so much, um, Clark Io, for Clark giving I. us oh, the uh, you are spectacular. Oh, oh my so we God. should get rid of this too, but yeah. Oh no, I put a semicolon. Oh no, that was from the docs. Okay, I cleaned it up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Like, I just have to like clean it up. So um, we have like this mixed, we have like these mixed right. things right here too. So, okay. Oh, Foolish Novel asks, so semicolon, what's the latest? Should you use them or not use them in JS? When in Rome, you should not use semicolons, evidently. So um, I'm going to do actually just use the state dot username because that's like, uh, and then user state dot color. I feel uh, so much more comfortable type, whoops. Uh, I feel so much more comfortable typing on your stream than I do on my own stream. Yeah, but it's like um, a lower investment, I suppose. I don't know. Or perhaps yeah, like, so. you know that I'm like a, like a worse typist. Like it's very hard. <laughs> This is so there we go. Cool. See, look how much nicer that is. This is amazing. I'm gonna like just uh, put myself, put us to like big mode, just to show like how oh, gorgeous our work is. Null. <laughs> I'm glad that we did that color check because look, Forest Villeneuve came up as null. What <laughs> color would null be? <laughs> Black. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. Coding art. This is so cool. This I'm is amazing. Excited. I'm so like. I was like before, just before we got it working, I was about to tell you that uh, like respectfully, mm, we are over time. Or are you like, do you need to get to work and things? Oh. Uh, yeah, I have to go in about, um, let's call it like five or 10 minutes. Yeah. Cause I, I need to put my shoes on and then, um, then we, get out uh, the door. We, then we are perfect really. Like I think that we, yeah, just, I think we're good. we just like, bam, I felt so good about this. <laughs> you, I mean, you did most of the work, but uh... no, that's not. <laughs> that is not true. You, you, uh, you already used the blink stick ahead of time, which is really good because we didn't have to go through that. But yeah, yeah I thought the stream was going to be super different. I thought I was going to be explaining how the blink stick works and breaking down like hardware and things like that. Um, but yeah, we can always talk about that on another stream too, because I want people to not be scared. Like you know, when you read API docs for the first time, yeah. And especially the Twitch ones, and you're <gasps> like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Yeah. It's so funny because people say to me, 
hardware is so difficult and things like that. And a lot of the time, it's less difficult than reading an entire chunk of API docs because like, okay, so let's, let's like design a protocol that would actually be feasibly um, like, like let's, let's design something that would actually be feasible. So let's say, um, let's say like, you know, you design something for hardware. Hardware is literally just listening for a bunch of bytes on a USB connection, right? Yeah. And so you could do something like, um, oh, sorry. You could do something, oh, my monitor just turned off one sec. I have this like signal issue with my monitor all the time. Um, so you could do something like uh, buffer dot from, sorry. Uh, and then, Let's say, like, you could just make up your own protocol on the spot. You could say, all right, the first byte that I send is going to be whether or not it's a, like, configuration command or whether it's, like, a user command. So you yeah. could just literally say, well, I'm going to start from zero. Zero, zero means it's a command. Then the next thing might be, well, I want to change the color of this blank stick. So that command is going to be zero, zero, like, I don't know, two. You just pick a random thing. Yeah. And then the next three values are going to be RGB, right? So it could be, like, zero times, like, um, zero for, like, no red, and then zero times FF for, like, full green, and then zero times, sorry, I, I'm, I'm saying zero times, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm creating the bytes. That would be a legitimate hardware um, thing. Then you could basically program the hardware in C to just listen for a stream of like five bytes. And if you've got five bytes and the first one starts with zero, zero, the second one starts with zero, two, you're like, oh, okay, so that's a command to change the color of the LED. And then the next three that follow are going to be the RGB. Anyone can like do that, right? Yeah. Like. And that is actually kind of almost flatter than having to think about API and tokens and JSON and all of this stuff. And that then you would true. basically just send the message. And there are abstraction libraries for us to connect to USB devices. That's sometimes how easy hardware is. And I think that people don't realize that. Because so that's like, the that's, last thing I, that, I think to that's say. Like, that's beautiful because in a way, what you wrote there, uh, yes, it seems scary at first. But once you explain like how simple it is, and if we compare it to the like atrocious amount of things, like time that we just spent on like understanding abstraction, yes, mm -hmm. the abstractions that have been made yes. to help us, like it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of nice to be close to the thing, even if it's a little bit harder to like parse it initially, like not having to cobble things together and like understanding the abstraction on top of the abstraction on top of the abstraction is. It's actually like, very nice. Yeah, let me, um, if you look at my TR code, actually. Um, Hang on. I, I, have, I have a link that I can send people. I have this function called make color buffer. Uh. And it's literally just taking a hex color code and it is substringing the hex color code to take, you know, the R, the G, and the B. Yeah. And then it returns that as a three byte buffer. And because my tiara doesn't do anything except change colors, I just send it three bytes every time. And it just assumes, oh, this is going to be an RGB value for me to change it to. That is the world's most simplest, I guess, like hardware communication protocol is yeah. send this over Wi-Fi or send it over the USB cable and just send three bytes and it's RGB. That's as simple as hardware can be. And so for me, I always think it's funny when people do get really scared of it because I'm like, it's actually simpler than, than yeah having to get your head around like the abstractions of something like React, for example. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And th that is, I think that a lot of people confuse simple and uh, uh, simple and, and uh, Simple and easy. Oh yes, sorry, yes. Yeah. Of so it's a little bit like e like uh, this is. Uh, it's actually not hard either. Like it's just like um, unfamiliar. Yes, exactly. So I try and tell people it's not that you can't learn it. It's just that you haven't seen something like this before. And in fact, I find that a lot of data sheets that are written for devices are better written than a lot of API docs on the internet as well. But you do get your really bad data sheets, just like you get your really bad API docs as well. God, that was such a good finish. I think, don't think like that was like professional hosts 
good like time to get the narrative. <laughs> I absolutely love that. We have to do more streams. Yeah, this would be really fun. Um, we should. It'd be fun to like choose a project and just go at it and see how far we can get in two hours, which is something that I've done with Sermo before, and it was really fun. Oh, I, would I love, love that. that this is still running and it's just changing it the whole time. <laughs> it's like really, it's so fun. Oh, this is brilliant. I actually, I was not expecting us to get like something finished at all. Like this was brilliant. Was so cool. Um, yeah, wait, I recognize you, new cat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Zeus is famous. Uh, so I think <laughs> that we should uh, like finish off the uh, stream to remind people to uh, uh, follow uh, Zeus on Twitch. You can see her uh, Twitch alias under her camera there, Noop <laughs> Cat, which I didn't like. I have always pronounced uh, Noop uh, as uh, Noop for my entire life uh, because I'm a Swede and I didn't understand the connotation. Um, so you were actually like the person that like where I actually learned learned to pronounce it correctly after learning it like 15 years earlier or something. <laughs> it's so good. I take both pronunciations. It's really what people like. Most people really love saying noob cat. And so they get so sad about no up. And I'm like, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. Like whatever matters to you is fine. Yeah, I love noob. Noob, it sounds really good. Uh, and this is a Blink stick. Uh, they are, uh, they're available on blinkstick.com. It's been very nice to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, they very, are they're really fun um although the yeah the whole node.js version thing that's that's a thing but yeah yeah but i think it's yes uh, i think it was a good baptism by fire yes learn to not care about these things mm -hmm. um yeah and with that uh i uh i will let uh noob cat <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh sue sinton uh, and everybody else uh, in chat go to work for the people that are in the American time zone and uh, the people that are in my time zone and similar will go have a nice evening and I am hope that everybody has an, an awesome week. Thank you so much everyone for, for joining the stream. It's, it's been a blast. Thanks for having me. This has been really fun. Oh. Yeah, we should definitely do this again. Let's. All right, bye chat. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Hostinger. Uh, link and coupon code in the episode description down there. If you're new, welcome. This is Fun Fun Function, a YouTube show about programming. You can check out what it is about in this playlist here. Or if you just like, wow, subscribe right now by clicking here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.